Welcome to this lecture on industrial relays in which we're going to be taking a look at two different relays that I have in my hands right now. And we're going to be going through essentially the basics of relays in industrial control systems. We're going to be taking a look at the diagram. We're going to be discussing which terminals are important to wire, how to understand the diagram that's going to be on the relay. And last but not least, we're going to be connecting some of these pins to 24 volts. We're going to be toggling the relay and then observing which pins have changed states and how you can utilize these relays in common control systems applications. Without any further delay, let's get started. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's going to be several different flavors of relays. There's going to be bigger and smaller packages depending on how much current the relay is able to conduct. But there's also going to be a question of the voltage on the control side as well as on the terminal side. So in this case, if you uh, pay attention to what's written on the relays, you'll notice that the left hand side relay or this blue marker relay is going to have a coil which is going to be 24 volts DC. And the right hand side relay is going to have a coil which is 120 VAC. If I bring this in closer, if the camera focuses, you'll notice there's going to be a little label right next to the coil. So here it's going to be on top of the coil, which says 120 VAC. And here this coil is going to be here on the side. And as you can see, it's 24 volt DC. As I mentioned before, you also have the rating for the contacts. So in this case, it's 10 amps at 220, 250 volts AC. And of course, that's DC as well. And then on this side, you have 10 amps. And it's probably the same voltage rating, but it should list it somewhere on the side. And you can also look up the manuals. So a lot of these relays are going to have data sheets and they're going to have numbers on them. So you can simply Google this number and be able to find what it's rated for. The next thing that's also going to be available on the side of the relay is the ratings, but also there's going to be diagrams. So there's going to be some UL listings, of course, depending on the safety ratings of this relay. But if you um, if you look at the one that's rated for 24 volts DC, you'll notice that there's going to be a diagram here at the bottom with the different terminals. And it's a little bit difficult to see. That's why I had to bring in the second relay, which is an Allen Bradley uh, 120 VAC relay, because they do put the diagram at the front. So I don't know if the camera is going to focus well or not but I will have that image essentially displayed as well. So let me just try and uh, get the camera to focus, but essentially it displays the coil and it also displays all of the contacts. And if we, if I read the contacts to you, it's going to be one, six, 11 are going to be the main contacts and the secondary ones at the bottom are going to be four, three, five, seven, and eight, nine. And those are going to be the same on both relays. So it makes it really uh, convenient if you need to replace a relay. So here I also, uh, you've probably noticed that this relay has a base. So if I pull on this relay, I can remove the base from the relay. And of course, this would sit on a DIN rail terminal. As you can see on the back, there's this little switch, which is spring loaded. But essentially, this would load onto a uh, DIN rail and allow the relay to be mounted here. And of course, through the screw terminals, which we're going to look in just a second, you can secure the different wiring that you need. Obviously, by tightening, you can secure the cable inside and allow it to go somewhere else where it's needed. So that being said, the bases or I guess the pinouts of both relays are exactly the same. So you can use this same base for this type of relays. And there's going to be different sizes of relays like I've mentioned. So don't expect every single relay to match this base. There's going to be different sizes of bases depending on the type of circuits you need. Now, the next thing that I do want to mention is, like I said, if this relay is placed into the base, there's going to be only a single way to 
to position it so you'll notice that there's going to be a little notch on this middle uh, plastic insert and there's going to be the same notch in the base so there's really no way for you to kind of misplace the relay if you try to force it in then it's going to be very very difficult there's only going to be one single location which is like this then the relay slides in and you can kind of push it in gently to make sure that the pins make contacts with the terminals now there's also going to be this little lever so to speak that you can press on right here so if i press on this lever you'll notice that there's going to be a change in this little window so it goes from this translucent color or essentially black because there's uh, no light at the in the back to this kind of orange when I press it. So this is a manual toggle for the relay. And essentially, if we look at the contact, I'm not sure how well you can see this on the side here, but if I press that little piece on the on the top of the relay, you'll notice that the contacts switch positions. So essentially, it is a manual way to trigger the action of the relay, which would be otherwise caused by the coil that we're going to be energizing through voltage. And the same notch is going to be available on this relay. They are they're, they are color coded, but I wouldn't necessarily rely on the color code because you can easily remove this and you can swap it out. So just, uh, just pay attention to the labels on the relay. And of course, as you can imagine, if you were to plug in 110 into this 24 volts DC coil, you might damage the coil and of course render the relay um, useless. And if you were to put 24 volts on the 110 coil, then chances are it would just not activate because it wouldn't get enough uh, current at that specific voltage. So just uh, pay attention to that. The next thing we're going to look at is of course the contact. So here on this relay, like I said, you're going to have this label in the back. And what I can tell you is that contact number one is going to contact number four. Now contact number one going to contact number four, like I said, it's the same exact scheme as we have on this one, but contact number one on this specific base might be in a different location, but you'll notice that some of those contacts are essentially together. So they're going to be labeled and we're going to uh, try and figure this out, but here's going to be our one here at the bottom. I don't know how well you can see that label. Let's see if the camera decides to focus in, but that's going to be our number one. And then it goes to either, I'm just comparing to the other relay, it goes to either four or three. And so our four and three are going to be up here. So right here. Now, the one thing that's important to notice is depending on, of course, the position of that coil in the de-energized state, the relay is going to tell you whether or not it's normally open or normally closed. And it's fairly obvious by this diagram, but if you only have the base, you do have an indicator here at the way, all the way at the top. So here we'll say that three is normally open and four is normally closed and what that really means is that in a de-energized state so for example right now there is no electricity going through the coil it means that if i was to connect wires from this terminal one to this terminal uh, terminal four which is normally closed i would have continuity and then when i would put the voltage when i would put voltage onto the coil of course the corresponding voltage then the coil would allow this one to four to be open. So let's look at that concept really quickly. So we're just going to focus on the first set of terminals, but they are repeating. So they are pretty much the same. I'm going to move in my Fluke 87 voltmeter. I'm going to set it to the resistance mode and I'm just going to test the terminals. So of course, if I touch the two terminals, there should be a zero resistance and it's 0 0.2 probably because it cannot read that low. So I'm going to measure the resistance, first of all, on the normally closed terminal. So if I land the terminals all the way into uh, where the cables are going to slide in, as you can see, the resistance is fairly minimal. So it's 0 0.5 instead of the 0 0.2 that we saw earlier. That being said, that is going to be an acceptable resistance level for the relay. So this is the normally uh, normally closed contact that we have in the de-energized state. I'm going to wire in this power supply to the relay in order to show you how the coil operates and what kind of a resistance we get once we switch the relay.
All right, so we have the power supply wired in and I have two leads going from the power supply to the coil. So the coil is going to be on terminals two and 12, sorry, two and 10. And they are going to be located on these opposite sides, essentially at the bottom of the relay. I already have the negative side landed. And then once I insert the positive side, you'll notice that the relay is going to toggle and there's going to be that iconic orange window color here. And of course, the relay keeps, if I move the cable around, then it keeps toggling back and forth. If you permanently apply 24 volts, it's going to stay on. If you remove that wire, it's going to be toggled off. So this is how you can control a relay from a PLC. And essentially, I'm using a power supply, but the PLC would provide the same voltage differential of 24 volts. And you can toggle this coil on and off through the program, through an OTE instruction for example and through an output of either the PLC through a local output or you can use what's called a point IO I've discussed it in a previous video so if you have a rack or something like this that has a 24 VDC output as you can see here then you can control the relay to be turning on and off and of course the advantage of the relay in case um you haven't caught on that is the fact that it's allowing you to source up to 10 amps per uh, per terminal so you can drive very large loads you don't need to be constrained by the point io which i believe is only 0 0.6 amps you can drive heaters you can drive uh, motors and you can drive other different devices that you wouldn't otherwise be capable through just direct io so that's how you wire the the relay and just to recap you will have three different sets of uh, terminals that are going to be available to you. So you can essentially control three different devices through the same signal with uh, one single relay. And those are going to be one, four, three. So that's one set of terminals. The second one is going to be six, five, seven. And last but not least, you have 11, eight, nine. And they are, of course, labeled accordingly on the base as well. So you can find them there too. And one set of the contacts in each set is going to be normally open and the other one is going to be normally closed and what I mean by that is that the current is either going to go from one to four or it's going to be going to uh, from one to three in the energized state for each individual uh, essentially pair of contacts so hopefully that makes sense if you guys have any questions whatsoever about relays about how to connect them about what kind of different loads you can run make sure to post them in the comment section thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software I should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye